And we're back, back in front of my set. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to bring you guys back here, but I have important business. I wanna round out Pride Month by doing a review of Poison Ivy Thorns. It is a really thoughtful retelling of the origin story of Poison Ivy, who is one of my favorite man-hating, brilliant lesbians. This book has it all. There's some horror, there's some murder, and it's very gay. So without further ado, let's talk comics. I'll start out the gate by saying I recommend you pick up this comic at your local comic retailer. It was really good. It was easy to read, not because um, it was dumbed down in any way, because you wanted to consume the content. It's really beautiful. It was illustrated by Sarah Kippen. It was written by Cody Keplinger. And Cody Keplinger is an out and proud lesbian. You can find it on her Twitter bio. And you can tell in the way that she wrote Poison Ivy. You can tell that Poison Ivy in this comic was written by a woman who thought about a woman's experience in the world and what trauma from the men around her can do, right? And I thought that it was just so refreshing because often we see female characters in superhero stories, whether they be heroines or morally gray or bad guys uh, through the male gaze, which looks a lot like this. You know, and that's what it is, but it was just really refreshing to me as a queer woman to read this queer story that also was just dark and, and gritty, but not in an overplayed way. It was just, it was very good. I really enjoyed it. I, let me just stress that right now. And so to just kind of lay it out simply for you, Pamela is in high school and you sort of start out seeing her commit this uh, casual bioterrorism um, crime because she's trying to protect some plants in this area that's going to be developed, you know? And so you see her start out with this very intense, she's taking a stance and she's taking control and you're like, oh, like good for you. But come to find out, you know, Pamela has almost no autonomy in the beginning. Her, her dad is unfortunately um, guilting her into things, manipulating her and quite literally torturing her all under the guise of trying to find what's the matter with her mother who's being kept in the attic, Jane Eyre style sad, right? And Pamela wants to help because she feels like, one, she can't say no because that's her mom and she loves her mom so much and she wants to help and that's just some real not great manipulation if you ask me. And then, you know, of course there's the stereotypical guy at school who's lying about having slept with her and like kind of harassing her. But in comes one of my favorite characters, of course, except for Pamela, Alice. She's tiny little goth girlfriend, tiny little goth girlfriend, I can talk. And everybody should have a tiny goth girlfriend, in my opinion. They're just, they're very cute. This story has a lot of horror and a lot of bad things that happen to Pamela to, in order to sort of get the Phoenix rising from the flame situation. Um, but the romance was really effortless. It was sweet and it was kind and it, it showed the way that Pamela was able to learn to trust and that it was important to her story arc. So it wasn't just in there for no reason, right? And I really appreciated that because sometimes it just feels like I don't know, people are smooching just, just cause. But I, I really enjoyed it and I really liked Alice's character. She did a good job holding up Pamela's character while also being like her own cute, quirky, assertive self. And I think that that helped Pamela a lot on her way as she tries to break essentially out of the shackles of the patriarchy. Sister, we're all out here trying to do that, right? And I don't wanna give you all of the details, right? Because I want you to read this comic because it was really good. But ultimately I'll say I really liked Pamela's path from innocence to independence, right? We got to see along the way the people and the way that they shaped her life and the way trauma shapes her life, right? Um, and the way that she chose to, tr to trust some people and not trust other people. And that really flavors the character of Poison Ivy. I mean, I think she's like, pretty known for like not being into dudes. And not, I don't mean cause she's a lesbian. I mean like she doesn't trust men, she doesn't like men. And that is often part of her backstory. And I, I think that this was such an illustrative way to show maybe why in adulthood she may feel this way because we know that ultimately she goes on to go to school and she becomes like this prolific botanist even though she's often portrayed as like a villain or at least morally gray. Right. However, there were some things that were definitely left up to interpretation, um, sort of the killing joke style, except not like that. It's more like, you know, you question whether or not Pamela came to her independence because she was so sick of the things that were happening to her, because she was taking that back, or because she had some sort of mental breakdown due to the experiments that her dad was forcing on her. I mean, some of them even killed her. He brought her back to life. They were very terrible. And, you know, like, 
she was experiencing some issues. You know, that's how she got her powers to talk to plants, but she was also experiencing some mental health issues because of that stuff. So was she really taking back her independence or was she having some mental health issues? I think that's open to interpretation, but not in a bad way, because ultimately, Whatever the catalyst was, we know that she finds success in herself later on, right? Because we're familiar with the character of Poison Ivy. Um, so I don't think that it was framed to blame mental illness in any way, to um, make it seem like she needed to be mentally ill in order to be free. Like, it didn't feel like that at all. Um, it mostly felt like it was a combination of her coming to her senses and finding her strength through being able to trust people, through her own means, um, and also sort of, I don't know, maybe being helped a little bit by the fact that she felt stronger and different because of these experiments, right? You know, in the end, uh, again, I don't super wanna spoil it, but I would have loved to see more Alice. And it's up to interpretation whether or not her mom survived. There are some unanswered questions, but in good cliffhanger ways, right? Because this is just an origin story. Like, we're not fully trying to get into like full blown poison ivy, though I would love to see both Kippen and Keplinger um, take on like a full blown poison ivy story. I would love to see more of this sort of early on poison ivy from them because they just did such a wonderful job. Like, it was, like I said, so beautiful, so well written. I think they encapsulated Pamela's general kind of want to be a little bit antisocial, but also sort of letting people into her mind and the way that she cares so much about plants. They made her very, very sympathetic, even though she does do a murder or two, you know? And let me tell you, she does the murder thing, I'm not gonna tell you who, but get you a girlfriend who will cover up a double homicide for you because Alice was there, you know? She's out there, she's digging the grave, she's ready, she's not telling anybody, that is, Love. I, 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 do I have to be clear that I'm not condoning homicide? Okay. <laughs> Ultimately, I enjoyed reading this comic so much. It's been a while since I've sat down and read a comic. I'm sure you know the world's been a little weird recently. Also, we just, I'm, you can maybe tell that I'm sweating. It's been hot here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, it's just been thing after thing, so I was so happy to be able to sit down with this comic and just have such a lovely reintroduction to reading a graphic novel, right? It's lovely, I would recommend it to anybody. There are some very heavy themes, like I said before, if you find that triggering, maybe not the book for you. But if you're okay with that kind of stuff, if you like a good like gothic horror sort of situation, right up your street, appropriately gay, read it in Pride Month, out of Pride Month, whatever, I can't recommend it enough. Um, yeah, I had such a good time. I'm gonna read it again. It was, it was just so aesthetically pleasing. I'm just, I know, I'm ranting, I'm raving, I'm sorry. Pick it up, read it, let me know what you think. You can find me on Twitter, at hello underscore destiny. You can also comment below. This is YouTube, leave me a comment. I would love that. I love talking to you guys. Next week I'll be back with um, Easter eggs, hidden stuff, background stuff on episodes three and four of Loki. I'm really excited to chat with you guys about that, but the only thing I have to say for now is cannon by Loki. <laughs> I feel like I have a cross to bear with this, okay? I'm bisexual, it's Pride Month. Let me have this, all right? Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I feel mildly insufferable. It's really hot in this room. Maybe that's what's up. But thank you guys for all of your patience. I love that you stick with me no matter the kind of content that I turn, but I'm looking to read more comics recently. I gotta hit up Floating World Comics at 400 Northwest Cooch Street here in Portland. I'm so excited to see them again now that I'm fully vaxxed and I'm feeling great about being out in the world masked, of course. You know, still, we're being careful for ourselves and other people. It's just the right thing to do. Um, anyway, <laughs> thank you so much. Like, comment, subscribe, all those things I'm supposed to tell you to do because I'm on YouTube. I appreciate you. I will see you at same-ish time, same place. And until then, this has been Nerd News with Destiny. That's me. Happy Pride. Mm -hmm.